This video is brought to you by TubeBuddy, a browser extension to help you optimize and grow your channel by providing you with all the right and most effective research tools needed. If you sign up now, you'll get a 30-day free trial of any paid plan of your choosing. All you have to do is sign up through this link. Now, on to the video. All I'm saying is that we'll all be judged in the end. All of your brothers. And you, Patrick. And you, Kate. Who's gonna judge Kate? What would she win if they did Virgin of the Year? Oh. I'm thinking maybe you can catch VD for both Fuck of us, you, Patrick. Katie. Language. Sorry, Ma. Ho oh, ho, there he is. Mr. Fucking Crazy Man. You want a beer? No. Good, because I ain't fucking got none. Very funny. Maybe if being a drunkard doesn't work out, you can be a comedian. Fuck off. <laughs> and you, Kate, fuck off out of here. But aren't you going to introduce us? Sure. This is Nico, some drug dealing to fucking generate from some armpit in Eastern Europe. That's my ma. Nice to meet you. Hi. And this is my sister, lovely lass, scared to bits of life, and fucking off out of here right now before I throw a fucking bottle at her. Patrick. Nice to meet you. Likewise. See you around. For every set of black sheep in the family, there has to be at least one golden child, right? Kate McCreary is the only daughter and last born child of the McCreary crime family. Despite being an heir to this Irish mafia, Kate sticks out like a sore thumb from the rest of her family. But in a good way, unlike some people. Being the only McCreary with morals and integrity, she tries her best to keep a strong, caring, and bright exterior. But growing up in such a dark environment like this one, one has to wonder how long it will be before that bright light becomes dim. Her primary purpose in the game is being a dateable girlfriend for our protagonist, and a blatant plot device which I'll get to later. But for now, let's close the final chapter of the McCreary book with the dramatic life and the not-so-pure purity of Kate McCreary. Kate was born in Dukes, 1980. She is the little sister of Patrick, older by a year, Gerald, the middle child, Francis, the second eldest, and Derek, the firstborn. Of all her children, I would say that her mother, Maureen McCreary, was the closest to Kate. But as for Mr. McCreary, as abusive and inappropriate as he was to his sons, Kate was always an exception to him. She was the only child Mr. McCreary never abused. Because of that, Kate was able to see the goodness in him regardless of everything. Unfortunately, being her father's favorite wasn't enough to save her innocence. Because years of having to witness her brother's abuse at his hands and watching them get into vicious bloodbaths with each other have left her in therapy for a good little while. But Kate, while she still doesn't condone violence to this day, has managed to adapt to the madness pretty nicely. And to further break away from her family's reputation, she took a job at the Duke's Community Center. When Kate first meets Nico Bellic, he's working alongside Packy. She takes an instant liking to him and vice versa, and they make small talk every time Nico comes around. After working together for some time, Packy, despite being against it earlier, one day calls Nico encouraging him to spend some time out with Kate, as she has no outside life apart from her job. As a dateable NPC, there are quite a few differences that set her apart from the others. Firstly, Packy mentions early on that Kate is not the kind of girl who puts out, due to having conservative values, making her the only dateable NPC that won't invite Nico in for hot coffee. But in terms of actually dating her, she herself clarifies that it's not really a date and that she and Nico are just starting out as friends. She is also rather complex to hang out with. Being pretty critical of what Nico wears, she doesn't like shows, fast food, or bowling. But she does like playing darts, pool, eating at decent restaurants, and especially drinking at bars. I'd like a drink. Look at my family. But hanging with Nico in general allows her the freedom to show a more honest, vulnerable, and even cynical side to her that she doesn't normally show. 
which gets amplified when she's drunk. And I'm crazy out drinking with a killer, and with his family so fucked up, I don't even want to talk about it. But why would I worry? What in God's name have I got to worry about? <laughs> hey, be good, Julia. I'm just neurotic, aren't I? Really self-indulgent, really idiotic, pathetic. What are you gonna do now? Shut up, please. Later in the story, she apathetically attends the funeral of one of her older brothers, largely to support her grieving mom. She also receives an invite from Nico's cousin Roman to his upcoming wedding. Near the end of the game, when Nico is faced with a moral dilemma, he separately calls Roman and Kate for their opinions. While Roman encourages him to do the deal, Kate will tell him that it's not worth compromising his morals in favor of money. But regardless of what Nico chooses, this one decision will permanently shatter his relationship with Kate. If Nico chooses greed over principles, this will disappoint Kate enough for her to not attend the wedding at all. But after hearing about Roman's death at the hands of Dmitri Roskolov's hitman, she phones Nico after story completion to give her condolences, promising to be there for him whenever needed. But just a few in-game days later, Kate has a change of heart. After thinking long and hard about it, she's come to realize that despite having feelings for Nico, she knows full well it's not even worth living with all the violence, death, and madness anymore. She breaks up with Nico over the phone and moves from Liberty City. She also leaves him an email expanding her thoughts. But if Nico sticks to his morals, Kate happily attends the wedding with him. On their way, the two discuss their futures together. Nico confides in Kate that he's ready to leave his life of crime behind and just live normally for once. Kate, however, is a bit hesitant to take any further steps in her relationship with Nico, but he reassures her. The rational half of me says, get away from him, protect yourself, but the other half says he's good, he can be redeemed. Well, which half are you going to listen to? I'm Irish, Nico. We're a people known for strong whiskey, mystics, and Catholicism. Rational blood doesn't flow through these veins. You won't regret this, Kate. I'll look after you. I'll protect you. A few moments later. You fucking double cross an immigrant shit! This leaves Nico, little Jacob, and Roman to all set out to avenge her death against the one responsible. Later on, Nico will receive a call from a grieving Packy who's in utter disbelief that his innocent little sister was the next to go and Roman will also call Nico, giving him support and promising to name his and Mallory's unborn child after Kate if it's a girl. Personally, I never cared for Kate, but with her being one of the few genuinely decent characters in the GTA franchise, she had the potential to be so much more if her role in the storyline was more prominent. Maybe she could have been someone Nico needed for positive motivation and change someone to challenge his ideals and instill boundaries. But instead, she unsurprisingly becomes just another tragic case of what happens when decent people are involved with those who live dangerously. Not just that, but because she has very little bearing on the plot, she comes off as completely useless, and both endings highlight it. And going back to what I said about her being a plot device, her death in revenge just serves as a wake-up call for Nico, and feels more like an afterthought later on. In Deal, her choice to leave Nico, while understandable, it just makes getting to know her all this time absolutely meaningless. And if she really was meant to teach Nico this lesson, I don't see why he needed her when he has Roman for that. As if this guy didn't suffer enough.